Hey there and welcome to the Code Wrinkles channel. These days I got very angry with so-called LinkedIn influencers that post misleading stuff. Especially this time it was this type of post and picture that triggered really my attention. This picture suggests that we have here a comparison between synchronous and asynchronous programming, obviously suggesting that the part of the ride is actually asynchronous programming. The problem is it is not async programming at all what you see there on the right side resembling something like a Gantt chart. I don't want to criticize the author of this post but I just want to point out that this information is wrong. And it got really tens of thousands of likes and comments and everybody was just saying hey great share that's nice and basically most of that people will come to interviews and when they will be asked about async programming or async and the wait in C sharp they will simply fail the interview because they don't understand what problem async and the wait actually solves and why what you see in this post is actually not async programming. To prove my point I have recreated here some very basic applications that do exactly what it is described in that picture. So we have all these tasks for creating breakfast, like making coffee, fry eggs, fry bacon, make a toast, add butter to the toast and add jam. And for all these type of methods, you see that we have methods and some of them, they have this task delayed because they depend on something else. And we'll talk about this just in a few minutes. And here we wait, for instance, one second, another one second, five seconds. And I think the maximum that we wait here is eight seconds. Now this program runs totally synchronously. So we don't have any async and await here. Now let's run it and see how much it takes to run this application. So here we started to build, to create this breakfast, like starting the coffee making machine, coffee is ready, hitting the pan, you see all the tasks and all the activities that we have for cooking breakfast are taking place here. We also have a stopwatch that at the end will tell us exactly how much time this breakfast actually took. And you see that it was 17 seconds. In this other application, I have the exact same thing, exact same task with exact the same timings, but this time I have introduced this async and await and you can see that we basically await all tasks that take some time or we await each method that has a task delay. Once again we start cooking the breakfast and already you can see that the order basically in which these things happen is exactly the same as it happened previously. And just a few more seconds and then the entire application will complete and breakfast will be cooked in our case and we'll be able to see how long it took. And you see it took also 17 seconds. So no matter if you use the synchronous version or the asynchronous version, it took 17 seconds both times. So why is that? Well, because async and await is not meant to solve the problem of concurrency or running things in parallel. It is meant to solve something else. So let's look into what async and await actually solves and why it is useful. Let's have first a look at how actually our processors and our computers work. When we develop applications against an operating system, could be even Windows or Linux, it doesn't really matter, we have this concept of a process and we have this concept of a thread. A process is basically an executing application, so each application that you execute is executed in a certain process. However, you also have this concept of threads. And threads are nothing else than a unit of four. The advantages that we have in desktop applications or generally when we work and we, or when we program directly against the computer is that a process can actually have or work with multiple threads. And this is why we call it multi-threading. In the past, achieving multi-threading was something a little bit more complicated than it is right now. Nowadays, in the modern .NET, we don't really have to care a lot about firing up our own threads and how or what exactly do we do there. Everything is handled basically by the .NET if we have this async and await, but we need to understand how is it handled. The next important thing is to understand how instructions or how our application instructions are executed by a processor. And obviously this is an oversimplification, but I don't think that this is wrong at all. CPUs run basically on the so-called fetch and execute cycle. They fetch one instruction in a sequence, they execute or run that instruction and they, for instance, return a result. The instruction could be, for instance, something simple like doing an addition or writing something in the console. And then the CPU fetches the next instruction. And basically the threads provide those instructions that the CPU needs to execute. Obviously on a computer, several applications are running at the same time. So that's why each application gets what is a so-called CPU time. Now when an application or a specific thread gets us some CPU time, the thread needs to provide something to the CPU to do. However, if the thread is blocked by something that it is blocking it, then it cannot provide this. So basically it's time wasted and nothing happens. 
If we think back at our breakfast analogy, we can think, for instance, that we have some actions, for instance, that we can perform directly, like, for instance, cutting the bread or preparing the ingredients for the coffee or things like that. But there are some operations in which we, as the cooks, we cannot directly impact them, like, for instance, the time that it takes for the coffee machine to make the coffee or the time that it takes for the eggs to get fried and so on and so forth. So this means that me as a cook, I am blocked in that specific instance. And if I'm not capable of kind of like avoiding that block and maybe doing also something else in that specific time, if you think about me as the cook, as the processor, then let's say I have quite a few problems. In programming, we can think about activities that are basically blocking the trails as activities that take a longer time to compute or to do something than the processor is able to, to process. Like the processor obviously is very fast and does stuff very fast, but there are some things in our computer that are very, very slow. For instance, when we read or write to files or, or when we work with databases, or for that matter, whenever we do something over a network, that's very, very slow. And that's why we call that it is a blocking operation. The question is though, what's actually the problem if we have this type of blocking activities or blocking instructions? Well, as you have seen in a console application right now, actually it didn't have any impact because previously in a synchronous version it took 70 seconds and in the async version it took also 70 seconds. However, if you are developing a WPF application, for instance, where you have at least two different threads, a thread for the UI and a thread for the business logic, then if the thread with the business logic gets blocked by such an operation, the UI freezes. And this is usually when you get that freezing UI with that circling mouse wheel. In web applications on the other side, the problems that blocking threads actually are causing for our application are not really visible from a first glance. Let me explain this. Let's assume, for instance, that we have a web server and our web server has a dedicated two threads. So our web server can work only with two threads. Now, we have a request that comes in. One thread is responsible to handle that request. Now, let's assume that handling that request takes 17 seconds, just like cooking our breakfast. But right after the first request, like after 500 milliseconds, there comes another request. Now the second thread will be used to service the second request. Last but not least, after another 500 milliseconds, another request comes in. But this time, unfortunately, we don't have any thread available to service that request because the other two threads are blocked by the other requests that are still waiting those 17 seconds. And this is where the problem comes in. So you usually see the problems when you have blocking threads in web applications only when you have a higher load. Therefore, to conclude this topic, let's emphasize, understand once and for all that async and awaiting .NET doesn't solve the problem of concurrency or parallelization. It solves the problem of blocking threads and the problem that blocking threads could cause to your specific application. So then why do we have all this confusion with representations like, for instance, a Gantt chart for async and await. Well, because this is a totally different programming paradigm and it's called parallel programming. And parallel programming deals with techniques that we can use to run different things in parallel or, in other words, run different things on different threads. .NET supports parallel programming and provides us with a lot of different things that we can use in our toolbox, for instance, to make sure that we can run different things in parallel. And here I just want to show you a very basic example of what we can do, for instance. So here we have the exact same application, the exact same concept of cooking breakfast, but we have done some tweaks here. Now, the methods that we have here, like make coffee and heat the pan, fry eggs, they are exactly the same. However, the things that we have done differently is that when we did, do run this application, we just here create the different tasks. And one way that we could achieve parallelization, probably this is also, why there is some confusion about this is that we can use this task class, for instance, and we have this when all method. And when we use this, we can simply fire and forget all these different tasks that we have here, and they will be executed in parallel. So let's run this application. And this time we see that even the task that we have here has started at the same time, the three tasks that we have in this when all. And obviously this optimizes because it runs everything in parallel and instead of 17 seconds, we have nine seconds. So we basically are 50% faster by managing to do this in parallel. However, I want to emphasize that you can even run methods in parallel that are not asynchronous, so that are not tasks. For that, we have different libraries or classes in .NET, like the parallel, and we can use the parallel for each or the parallel for to fire up tasks like this fire and forget. Before we wrap up, just yesterday, I got angry again and with another LinkedIn influencer. 
it created a post that said basically also with the graphical representation that running a weight like we do here with a weight to make coffee, a weight to write eggs, it's actually a code smell. And instead of doing this, like awaiting different things, we should use this task when all. That's obviously once again totally wrong for so many reasons. For sure, if you need to run these tasks like fire and forget tasks, then running them with task when all might be actually a good option. However, in most of the cases, this is not happening. And the reason for this is that these tasks should happen usually in a certain order. Like for instance, we want to first write something in a database, then we want to send a notification. So we want to know exactly the order in which different tasks are executed. If you run these tasks when all, you don't know exactly what that order will be. So you don't have full control on that. But there, there are even bigger problems with this because if some of these tasks here, like this one or this one, throws an exception, you don't know exactly which task did throw the exception. So exception handling is with more difficult when you run this task when all. So that's another reason why we should be very careful when we actually use this task when all and make sure that we really use it only as a last resort when we really want to run heavy things in parallel and then we are aware of all the downsides that we have of doing so. So if we think about the definition of a code smell, actually when you look into a code base and see task when all, that's actually more of a code smell than having several different awaits because this can create a lot of different problems in the application and leave place for bugs and defects while the await is kind of like much more straightforward. Obviously, if you take a deeper look at the code, you can realize that using the task when all is fully justified and it's okay. And we have also the mechanism in place to handle the exception. So we are aware about all the stuff that could potentially go wrong. And in that case, obviously we can leave it like this. So there are scenarios where we want to do this or we want to run it with task when all. This being said, if you think that this video was useful for you, don't be shy and hit the thumbs up button and like it. This will make it easier to discover for others that might find it useful as well. And if you are not subscribed to the Cold Wrinkles channel, make sure that you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on anything else that we do here on this channel, including a lot of different live streams. And if you have any idea or any question or just want to get in touch with me, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave a comment and I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time, I wish you the very best.